Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another edition of the Papa D's Cooking Show at the train in Fordsburg. Today I'm going to prepare you what you might consider a very basic curry and rice, uh, chicken curry and rice meal. But the difference is I'm using a revolutionary new method by using the Philips electric pressure cooker. And my rice will also be done in the Philips rice cooker. So here we are. I'm going to start off today with the, the chicken curry first, and then we'll move on to the rice. I've kept this chicken in a whole portion so that I can show you how I'd like to cut the chicken. Firstly, you can just dismember it and make it into two quarters. And also, what I need to show you is that you need to crack the bones in order to get that. The easy way to cut is always to dismember your chicken on the joints. So you see, I'm not chopping or fighting with the chicken at all. I'm just looking for the joints. And as you see where they come along, I'm just dismembering them on the joint. Now, always remember, if you use butter or ghee instead of oil, that's going to add a notch or two to your curry in terms of flavor. For now, I'm using a bit of oil. Because if you use the ghee directly, it's going to burn out. So what you can do is add a bit of oil, and then just add some ghee to it as well. There we are. That's ready now. My chicken was washed already, so I'm going to put it into here and let it start cooking. With that, I'll just add in some of my whole jeera because that can also braise with the meat and it will also take away some of those flavors that you don't want in your curry. My meat is in, sizzling away already. So you can see how quickly this cooks. With that, the only other spice that I'm going to add at this point is my cinnamon, about two cloves, and about two cardamom. Now, you'll find this almost a standard practice for me in all my cooking. I'm just going to crack the, the dry cardamom because I want that flavor also to come out. Now, as I said, I'm using this in most of my cooking. Those are the three basic uh, ingredients that I use when I start braising my meat. And that is purely because it enhances the flavor and also takes away any bad odors out of the meat. I'm just going to close that to speed it up a bit. I'm not sealing it. I've just put the lid on to speed up the process there. And uh, while that's cooking away there, Normally, I would saute the onions if I was cooking a curry. But in this case, I'm not going to saute. I'm just going to go ahead and slice them very thinly because I want them to dissolve. So I'm using about one and a half onions in this mixture with half a chicken. I've used half a can of tomatoes there. Now, I'll start off with my paste. I'll put in about two spoons of that because I like the flavor of the ginger and the garlic in here. My turmeric comes in next. About half a teaspoon of that. In, in my chicken, I use about one teaspoon of uh, the turmeric powder and two of the dana powder. Put in about two spoons of salt here. And there we are. All my ingredients are in. The garam masala, you'll notice I haven't put it in as yet. I'm first just going to give this a bit of a toss around. always nice to just 
give your drumstick one or two slits and now we can put this in here. That process that would have taken 15 minutes is no longer needed and there we are. And you know you normally saute your onions till they're almost turning pink because you want to ensure that by the time the curry is cooked that the onions are dissolved. Now in my case I virtually put them in here almost last. And then comes my tomato puree. Now if you want more gravy, then by all means add more tomato to this. And also another form of adding more gravy would be onion. So you can take your choice. While that's happening, I'm just going to put the lid on again for a minute, not to lose the heat. And I'm going to prepare my potato. This is another bugger that takes a long time to cook. Up-to-date potatoes are the best for making baked potatoes and also for chips. Now some of the tomatoes you get can take you forever to cook. I'm ready. I'm going to close my lid now and let the pot do its work while I go ahead and do something else. If you look in the front here, it says here chicken. And I'm going to put, let mine cook on exactly that time. I'm putting it on chicken, a little less than that because I've spent about five minutes preparing and sauteing the meal. The important thing is make sure the vent is closed because now you want the pressure to start building up. And while that's happening, I can go ahead and do my rice. And then I'll start cutting my onion up, cutting them up in thin slices. And I've got my ghee ready here. So I like cooking my rice with ghee. You can use oil as well. But in the rice cooker, it's fine to start off with the ghee because the, uh, the oil doesn't burn out, nor does the ghee. I'm just putting a little bit of oil in there as well. Into that, I'm just going to crack my cardamom and throw it. The minute you do that, you can actually get the aromas of the cardamom. I'm putting about two cloves and of course some cinnamon sticks. This is really for the aroma that will develop into here. Now I've taken two cups of basmati rice. You know basmati rice can be a bit of a difficult thing to cook. Whenever you're cooking rice, just put it into a cup of, into a bowl with boiling water for a little while. Now I also want to remove the excess starch that is now showing here. But before that, I can throw my onions in now. My pan is hot. I'm going to start cooking my onion. I'm going to put my rice in. Give it a bit of a stir around. Now, the ideal mixture is the equivalent amount of water to the equivalent amount of rice. Okay? So I've, and then in terms of salt, I'm putting one teaspoon to one cup. So I've got two cups, uh, two teaspoons of salt there, and I'm going to add the water. If you like, a good way to measure is that's how much rice I had and that's how much water I'm putting in. There we are, that's all ready. And now I can take a break, have a coffee and come back. My machine is switched on. There's no timing or anything on this machine. So it will just carry on and once it's cooked, it'll go on to the stay warm. Right, so here we are. I've been away for a little while. 
and I left these two genies to do what they were doing, and let's see what the results are like. I just firstly need to depressurize here. You can see the steam coming out lightly from there. My rice is also done. Let's see what the results are in here. Firstly, I'm going to show you my potato. I'm going very carefully because I can see they're fully done. How's that for 15 minutes of cooking? So I don't want to mush up all my potatoes, so I'm going to take some of them out before I stir my curry around and just add a little bit of garam masala and some dania to it. And thereafter, I'll call Chef Proud to help us serve. If you don't have a problem with your potatoes mashing up in your curry, then you can just go ahead, toss it around, and serve. You can see how delicate they are, fully cooked through. But of course, I need to just stir my pot before I serve to get all the ingredients together because you will remember, I put them in very loosely and just on top of each other. I've removed my potato. You don't normally have to do this, but it depends on the type of potato you use. So now I'm going to give the pot a bit of a stir around. There we are, that's done. Nice thick gravy. And let's see what's happened to the chicken in the meantime. How is the chicken cooked? Here we are chicken coming off the bone. So as you can see, it's perfectly cooked, and that was done in 15 minutes. What I would suggest, if you don't want the potatoes to overcook, in that you have been sauteing for five minutes, then cook it for a little less time. I'm gonna add in my garam masala. Very little, remember this is also an optional extra but very little. This will just enhance the flavor and the aroma. And then I'm also just gonna add in some dania over the top. This also has a wonderful aroma. It's a number one accompaniment to any, any curry dish. And there we go, that's done. And I'm ready to serve. I'm gonna call over Chef Proud to help us to present this meal. While he's coming through, Chef Proud, if you can come through and let's serve this meal. Let's see how the rice is doing. Wow, you can get the aromas coming through of the rice. And I'd just like to show you how beautifully that's cooked. Now that's basmati rice, cooked in about 15 to 20 minutes. And the volume of your obviously has doubled. And you can see the grains are all completely loose and fluffy. And that's today's presentation. Our curry and rice, chicken curry and rice, served with some nice achar and papar. And I'm sure you'll enjoy it. As you can see, this meal was cooked so quickly. As I said, if you don't want your, your potatoes to cook right through, then cook it for a little less time. About 10 minutes would be fine because you are already sauteing for the uh, earlier f uh, five minutes. And that'll be all from us today at Papa D's at the train. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.